Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Today I'm going to do something I have not done in years, and that is to paint a towel battle suit. Now the technique I'm going to demonstrate today can be used to do pretty much anything. So if you want to paint the white armor of the Viola Sept, you could instead start from white and use relevant colors there. The important thing really is the technique, and it's basically shading and dry brushing, along with one little trick about halfway through that I picked up from the nice guys over in the uh, military modeling circle. So be on the lookout for the, the secret sauce, as it were. Now, any questions or anything, feel free, of course, do ask, and the paints will be linked in the description below. So let's get stuck in straight away. Now I'm going to start with a primer of Avaland Sunset. Reason being, if my primer shows through any of my top coats, what will be there is instead sort of a pale yellow color rather than really garish white. Uh, basically, if I miss anything, yellow will look about right. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open, first of all, our Tau Light Ochre. We're going to start by covering over all of the armor plates. Now I'm just going to get some out, pop it on my palette, and add just a tiny smidgen of water. You don't want very much of this at all. And then we'll just start applying this all over the armor panels. Do not have to be careful with this at all. See how smooth that goes on? Uh, it might not show up terribly well on camera, but that's pretty perfect actually. So what we'll do, take my time now, go around and paint in all of the armor panels. Uh, you don't have to be very careful, because of course any of the sort of, I guess, undersuit sections we're going to paint that black in a bit anyway. So away we go. Now that actually went on super well. Uh, that took just a couple of coats, and because I was using a nice big brush, I was able to do that fairly quickly. The only trouble with these guys is that you got to get them from every angle, so make sure you are turning your model around upside down and all that to reach all of those odd spaces. What I've got now is we're going to paint in all of the sort of mechanical parts. And on most of these battle suits, they tend to be black. Now you can use a bad and black for this, uh, but I've got my Vallejo black because, as always, the coverage is something I'm looking for here. Now, I have spent a good half hour looking for the answer to the question, what parts are black? And uh, unfortunately, there doesn't really seem to be any straight answer. So I'm just going to go around and fill in the areas that I think look cool in black and try and avoid see this is quite fiddly because of the amount of gump he's got on him uh, i'm just going to try and avoid any of the uh, armor panels don't worry too much if you do hit them though you know we are going to end up needing to fix up a couple of bits but not to worry just take your time being as careful as you can when you come near those plates that you do want to be Yellow? Orange? What color are we calling that? Ochre, I suppose. Uh, but fill in all of these black areas now. Now that took me a little longer than I would like. Uh, that's probably going to be the most time-consuming part. And as you can see, there are some areas where... Oops, I did say we'll probably make some mistakes. <laughs> You'll also spot there are a few little areas here and there where I've actually not put any black in. And that's because I'm going to do some of these areas later in contrast. It's also going to help me with some of the areas, like on the back here, where I've been a little bit messy, and I'm going to have to go over that black again. But there is another stage I want to do first before we worry about that. So let's get on to that. But before we get to that tidy up stage, I'm going to put on another color. This is Scrag Brown. Just adding a little bit of water, like usual. And same as with the, the black parts, I couldn't really find the definitive answer to what parts where should be this color. So what I'm going to do is just pick out a few panels and add a little bit of visual interest to the model. You'll find this covers pretty well. Uh, so there, for example, I'll probably do some bits on his gun, uh, up on his little dealy boppers here, for example. Uh, this is not a Terribly interesting to look at, so we'll come back once I've finished that and see what areas I chose. Now, having picked out a few areas to touch in with that scrag brown, he's starting to look like a fancy airport in the late 70s. 
I really think that the number of panel lines that are on this dude, eh, just lends to some really easy spots to pick out a little bit of extra color. You'll see that there is a little bit of the uh, undercoat showing through, but we're not too worried about that because when we come back to do something with that later, that's going to pretty much disappear. What I've got now is I'm actually going back to my towel light ochre, and this is important. Uh, normally I try to save my sort of tidy up stages for the last step, but for areas like uh, this little bit of black that I've splurged here and other similar areas, I'm going to need to go around and tidy these up now before we move on to the next step. So grab your brush and anywhere that you've had a little bit of whoops with the black in particular, you can tidy those up now. Might take a couple of thin coats, but it will make a big difference. I've done some quick tidying up. What I'm going to do now is actually to varnish him, and he's nowhere near finished. What I'm going to do is grab my Munitor and varnish here, and just spray a quick coat over the top. What that's going to do is help us out when we come to shading him, as you'll see in a few seconds. Now I've given that about 10 minutes to dry, and we've got a little bit of a sheen to it, which is fine. We're going to paint over the top of that anyway. I've got now some Seraphim Sepia. What I'm going to do is, well, you could painstakingly go ahead and apply using a brush into all of the panel lines, and you know, that would take well, however long you want it to take. But half the reason that we've used that, uh, what you call it, varnish, is because what we're going to do instead, get my big old varnish brush, uh, sorry, not varnish brush, shade brush, and watch this. Now, the reason for the varnish is that when we take our shade and apply it like a so, of course, if I leave it like that, I'm going to get big tide marks. But what you can do instead is while that's still wet, you'll find it very easy to move it around with your brush off of varnished areas. So what we'll do is take my time here. Really work it into all your recesses, because the, the panel lines are essentially what you're doing this for. But anywhere that you get big, you know, tide marks, just move in with your brush and you can gently guide it towards the recesses. You won't have so much to tidy up then. So I'm going to go around, cover the whole bleeding thing <laughs> in some seraphim sepia, and we'll come back and get a look at what that looks like when that's dried. Now you can meticulously line in every single one of those panels, you know, individually with a brush if you like, but why? <laughs> what I'm going to do now, I've got my uh, makeup brushes. You can use a small dry brush for this if you like, but the makeup brush is a little bit softer, and that's going to be quite good for what I've got in mind. I've just worked in a little bit of Tyrant's skull. I'm just going to lightly dry brush the edge of his base there to get a feel for what I'm going to leave behind. And you really want to be very light with this first going on. So pick a hard edge and just very lightly drag your brush along there. And we're going to highlight all of the armor like this. So barely touching it at first. And you'll see, instead of having to edge highlight that with a brush, we can actually dry brush it. And I mean whisper, whisper touches with this, okay? you'll find it's much easier to have to go over the same area three or four times with your brush than it is to come back and try and you know fix this if you put too much paint on. So definitely practice this. Uh, dry brushing in this particular way, you know, it's, it's a time saver. And I guarantee, you know, if you practice at it, you'll start finding all sorts of places to use this. So I'm going to go around now and basically dry brush all the highlights onto this dude. You'll see as well, I'm going to use the same color, Tyrant Skull, on those uh, darker brown areas. You'll see why. We'll fix that up in a little bit. Now that's taken me probably about 10 minutes, and I would say there's maybe two or three passes in some areas. You will have to flip them upside down and hold them at all sorts of strange angles to really get in there but you will find you can dry brush highlights on things, especially nice hard edges like these battle suits have. I've got now a little retributor armor, and I'm just going to pick out these big 
these energy dealy thingies on the sides here. I've seen people do these normally in gold or brassy sort of colors, and I like that. So I'm just going to coat one quick pass of these. Now, if you thought I was going to paint a miniature without using Agrax Earthshade, you don't know me very well. <laughs> so I've got here my medium brush, and what we're going to do is just apply this over the gold bits, and as well, we'll put it on all of the darker brown bits, which is going to tie in those highlights, make them look a little bit different, and make these browner areas stand out just a bit more from the rest of the armor. Now on his chest and up on his arm here, you'll see there's these two Tau symbols. What I've got is a little bit of white scar. You want to be quite careful with this. Just go ahead and fill in all of those shapes. Now you will need to come back and do a second, maybe even a third coat. But these are not very big, so it's not hugely taxing. Now while that's drying, you can go ahead and shake up your Black Templar. This is the old contrast paint. And I do recommend really go to town on mixing it. You know, shake it for a good couple of minutes. Then we're just going to apply it straight over the top of all of the black areas. Uh, anywhere that we've had any little whoops moments, or we've got a funny kind of yellow tint, uh, because that Seraphim Sepia is over the top of it. Don't worry, just get into that now. Fill in those areas with... Uh, this Black Templar, and as well, you can get yourself a smaller brush if you fancy, or if you're feeling particularly brave. <laughs> uh, and let's make sure I'm grabbing this on the right angle. You can get in and start filling in some of these little areas, like so. Now you'll see that gives us a much tidier black. You know, that's still not quite dry, <laughs> but it's at least a nice flat black. But we can also use this uh, to do some of the logo stuff here on the front. So I'm just prepping up. I've got my uh, glaze brush here. So you could use a small, uh, small layer brush. And what we'll do is just paint it into the... Now, I know I laughed at this earlier, but uh, needs must. Just paint it in Black Templar. See, my shaky hands are giving me trouble here, but we can tidy up the uh, the outside of these rings in a couple of seconds. So, after tidying up the white, there's also a couple of dots of Evil Sun Scarlet, just to do in the uh, eyes, I guess. And I've got my small dry brush here, and I'm just going to lightly pick out the edges, some of the black detail, with some Necron Compound. Now with those last couple of details dry brushed on, you see I haven't done very much, just enough to sort of pick out some of the edges. That's actually the painting done. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop a base on him. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he's all finished. And then at last, with that base finished, our battle suit is complete. And so help me, I actually quite like how that turned out. <laughs> I know it's probably a little funny to hear somebody say that about their work, but I... Have to admit, I wasn't sure as I was getting into it, but uh, rather than throw it in the bin and start over, I'm actually quite pleased with how that turned out. It's similar in a lot of ways to painting an Imperial Guard tank, as a matter of fact. So there you have it. What I'd suggest, of course, is cruise along and check out the Citadel Paint app, uh, because there will be some very good suggestions on other color schemes you can adapt this to. The technique would be much the same, whether you were painting the uh, Viola or the Sao Sen, I think, the, the blue guys. Now, any questions with anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. And once again, a shout out to my patrons who literally made this video possible. Uh, I wouldn't have gone out and bought a box of Tau ordinarily, so thank you very much to everybody who's chipped in for that, including producers Jonathan Harris, Ben Hicks, Alan Nuttall, and Kyrie Crawford. So. Thank you very much, one and all. So, I hope you found something interesting there, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.